And I wanted to ask you about the big three. You had mentioned it. Now I was looking online, like you actually got drafted into the yeah. big three. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, when the big three started, my father was a, a coach. And so, and it was, it was cool. I, I got back in the off season. I just go and I check out the games and, and have a fun time. And then they changed the rule to where you can, they changed the rule to, to allow players, I think 25 and up is what it was. So I was like, I'm eligible. So I went to the com. I got invited to the combine, tried out. I don't know what was going to happen. Cause you got a lot of league guys, but I think, yeah, I got, I got picked up by uh, Rick Mahorn. <laughs> so that was cool. Got to play in the big three. So that was just a dream come true for me. Cause I, you get to play against guys that you idolized growing up, like Catino Mobley. Um, you get to see all these coaches that are like like family. Like uh, Julius Irving is like an uncle to me. Uh, Iceman, you know, you, uh, Gary Payton and those guys. So it's basically like a big family. And then a lot of the players are guys you know very well. So it gets no better than that. So I just had a fun time with it. And then uh, – Rick Mahorn, that 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 was an experience, <laughs> you know, playing for somebody who was, you know, going up against my father, you know, back then. That was that was insane. But he's he's such a cool coach. I had a fun time. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, Rick Mahorn, definitely infamous man. You named some goats, man. You named yeah. some, some some great players yeah. um, that's still active in basketball, and that's inspiring because. Even though they retire, even though they got older, they still got their hands on it. Like your dad, you know, he's still involved in basketball. Um, so did you ever get to uh meet Ice Cube or connect with Cube? Yeah, yeah, I did. I got to um I got to hang out with Ice Cube and he's he's such a, a cool guy. He really he's doing the league because he loves the league. I mean, he's just it's kind of a visionary in terms of basketball because so many of these guys still have a lot of game in them and he just wanted to create a platform where he could have them play and compete. So, I mean, you're playing against guys that, that, that still can hoop. Like I, my second game in the big three, I played against Joe Johnson and I grew up watching Joe Johnson was one of my favorite. He was one of my favorite players ever growing up and still is one of my favorite players. And I got that. My my second game ever in the big three, I'm, I got to guard him. So <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm having fun, too, because I'm going right back at him. And um, that was crazy. And this dude hit a game winner on me. I was so mad. <laughs> that was insane. But, um, yeah, the big three has moments like that to where I'm just like, this is surreal for me because I'm, you know, I, as to me, I've, you know, been all over the place playing. Uh, whereas Joe Johnson, he's at the, they gets no no high. There's no higher level that he's played on. You know, he's a superstar. So that was just cool to me. No doubt, no doubt. Let me see. We're about 28 minutes in. I had about mm -hmm. two or three more questions. Is that okay? Or you got to? Yeah. Oh yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me see. Now I can ask you this. Now your your dad, he's a Hall of Famer. He a legend. Some people's favorite player. Um, what are some things that you picked up from him? on in terms of basketball and definitely off the court yeah uh for me it was in terms of basketball he just he's one of those guys who's all about use your athleticism use your gifts use your blessings so uh in my family me and my father are the only two that really have that that height and athleticism now i'm not saying <laughs> no one else in my family is athletic but it's it's like the combination of having that height having that athleticism, having that physicality. So uh, he was just use it um, at any chance you get to where um, there's so many times, I think since me, I, I grew up playing guard and kind of, you know, when you get into those kind of professional situations, I'm a, I'm a guard, I'm a playmaker. So for me, like things like shooting a floater, you know, stopping, getting to my mid range, those are things that, are common to me, you know, shooting threes, whereas for him growing up, a lot of it was like, hey, I don't want to, why would you shoot a floater? Just jump over them, dunk on them, or why are you shooting threes? Just get to the, you know, get to the paint. So it was kind of a clash of styles to where 
you got like the new school, the the coaches who are going off of the Golden State Warriors philosophy of threes. And then you've got his style, which is like anything you can make is a good shot. And so he just kind of taught me to just use my my gifts, use my physicality, make sure that I'm I'm always going 100 percent on both offense and defense. So I think that was the biggest thing he taught me on the court, along with a, a whole slew of moves and, and everything. I think one of my favorite things to do being being six six as a guard is to post up other guards. Cause you know, most of the time the guy my matchup is, you know, six feet at best or six one, six two. So I'm posting them up and I'm just, you know, using my shoulders and, and stuff like that. But off the court, definitely just following your passions. Um, I didn't know what to expect from basketball. Of course, you play trying to play the highest level, but there's no guarantee. Nothing's promised. So for me, it was just about following a dream. I wanted to play against the best players I can play against. I wanted to play this game that I love. So you just said, follow your dreams. Never push me into it. Um, my mom was actually, she, she kind of wanted me to, to pursue academics. She wanted me to, you know, get a master's and, and do other things. But um, it's it's really just about pursuing what you love. So that's, that's what uh, my father and my mother kind of instilled in me. So off the court, it's just about pursuing your dreams and, and being a, good person not not being outside of yourself be humble be be kind things like that so just um just try to emulate him man that, that's what's up man that's what's up you got a, you got a perfect example you know of how to treat people because your dad's personality yeah. is just as infamous as his basketball mm-hmm. skills so that's definitely a blessing now you talked about passion i wanted to ask you about now are you a musician or you make music yeah, yeah, uh, that yeah. was before basketball. I just I picked up a guitar, um, I played it nonstop, and then I picked up a piano. I picked up a you know the drums, the bass, and that before I knew it, I could just play all these things, and I just loved to create, make music, and, and write. So that was kind of my first love. Basketball came came after that, and um, I, I still do it. I still I produce for some artists. Um, a lot of artists in LA, uh, pop artists, some rappers, and some R&B artists. And I just, I have fun with it. It's something I can do from anywhere. It's something that in the off season, it's a great way for me to spend my time just working with these artists. And then, you know, you mess around and hear one of them on the radio and you're like, that's that's so cool. That's the best. You be at the mall or something, you hear one of your artists and doing one of your songs that you help make. So that's just the best feeling. Man, that's phenomenal. So you multi-talented because <laughs> most people can't play one instrument, let alone learning how to play multiple instruments and, you know, just taking it to the level, you know, like you yeah. said, working with artists is in the industry. And also that's something like you say that you like to do in the off season mm-hmm. or in your downtime. So I got to salute you on that. Um, last it. question. Oh, yeah, no doubt. My last question before we get up out of here, Any you got any other projects you're working on, a book, or uh-huh. Film, or you know, yeah. any music the fans can check out, or any upcoming sporting events or anything like that. Yeah, for me, I'm uh, I'm doing a, a lot of different stuff right now. I'm getting kind of into film and television. Um, so right now, I'm kind of, I have been working on this uh, this book. A friend of mine told me that you know you should definitely write a book. So that's kind of been something I've been working on. Other than that, still doing music, and uh, I, I even might. I've been thinking about releasing my own album. I'm, normally I'm just a, you know, let the music do its thing with these other artists, but I've been thinking about just having my own album and just putting it out there just to at least have one out there. So I kind of have a lot of things in the works and then I'm also still getting ready to go play again. So yeah, just a lot of things <laughs> coming for me. I'm just trying to, trying to stay busy, you know. And that's what's up. I definitely look forward to that. If, if you if you want to do it, man, go for mm-hmm. it. The sky's the limit because yeah. it could be life changing for you, you know. And then at least you could say you tried it. You don't want to be like yeah. eighty years old, like I should have put the <laughs> album out. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. That's man. what I learned because I I think you just go out and do things. I I never like when they told me, okay, well you you can probably go overseas and play. I didn't know what to expect from it. I almost didn't do it, but it's just you know take a chance. 
you never know what you might like. And I ended up falling in love with it. So really just about doing things while you can, like you said. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely inspiring, especially something positive. So I want to thank you again. It's definitely uh, been an appreciate honor. It. Appreciate yeah, you man. having me. No doubt. Keep up the great work. And I definitely want to um, thank the viewers for tuning in. It's been another phenomenal episode of Taye Speaks. So until next time, family, we out. Okay. Peace.